It's nearly the end of 2018 and I have been living in Singapore for, it'll be four years next year. That is nuts. I, because there's no seasons here in Singapore, you cannot keep track of time and it just absolutely flies by. So I'm just so confused right now, but I've been living in Singapore for three and a half years. And you guys know I've talked about Singapore a lot, all kinds of Singapore topics, and I even vlog my everyday life here in Singapore. So if you are new and you wanna see more of that kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Subscribe, join the family. But today I wanna to teach you, well, I don't wanna teach you. I wanna tell you a bunch of things that I have learnt about living in Singapore for three years. Hopefully you'll find this interesting. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, life lesson number one, living in Singapore. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you feel like moving to a new country means that you get to start afresh, it's like a whole new life. No one really knows who you are, no one knows like about your past life or your background and you kind of get to make not a whole new impression of yourself, but you get to start all over again. That's how I feel. If that means that you used to be really reserved, why don't you push yourself out of your comfort zone now? Try new things, meet new people, have more experiences. I think age contributes a lot to this as well, but I feel like I'm a completely different person now to I to what I was when I first moved here. So many life lessons that I've learned, and I think just being in a new country in general means you have to push yourself outside your comfort zone, do things that make you uncomfortable, um, but in the end, you're gonna get the best results. It's a journey. So really relish that, the fact that you've got a whole new start. It's a good thing, it's a very good thing. Number two is embrace the local culture. I think it's very easy for expats to get stuck in this expat bubble and I know that Singaporeans definitely have this view of expats as being in their own little bubble and oh they don't integrate with us that kind of thing. We have to remember that it goes two ways. If you're Singaporean are you going out of your way to speak to, to expats and integrate them into your culture and as for expats you pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, trying to integrate yourself into local culture here in Singapore. I definitely think it goes two ways. In my personal opinion, there will be no point moving to a new country if you are not going to even bother integrating or learning about the culture of that country. I think you might as well just stay home. Like, I don't really understand, like, what would be the point? I think it's very easy for us to stick to what we know and kind of live within our safe bubble. But I think if you've come to a new country, you just have to embrace it. So try and integrate yourself into the local food culture, the way of life and local people. Try your best to speak to locals. It can be difficult from an expat perspective. It's like, how do I even meet locals? From a Singaporean perspective, not everyone will want to talk to us or um, get to know us, but some will. And that's great, so just just try your best. Push yourself, again, it kind of links to pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, but integrate with local culture. Okay, <laughs> life lesson number three. Okay, my viewers are going to probably love me for this comment, knowing our history. Cold storage is officially the most expensive supermarket in Singapore, lesson learned, okay? I did shop in cold storage for maybe two years and I knew that it was expensive when I was going around and everyone was like why are you going to cold storage it's the most expensive one go to fair price and honestly it was out of convenience cold storage was my closest supermarket that's where I just kept going although every time I got to the checkout I would like cry a little bit because I was like why is this so expensive Long story short, we now go to fair price. It's an absolute dream. The price of produce, the vegetables and fruits are just so much cheaper than cold storage, like a lot cheaper. Also the price of meat is so much cheaper in fair price as well. If you want cheap groceries, get yourself to fair price. Another life lesson, taxi uncles don't always know where they're going. Am I right? This can be really frustrating, but it's just something that we've had to get used to. Often you'll get into a taxi and even if you've ordered it on a grab, um, they'll ask you which way you want to go or they'll even ask you how do we get there. And for the whole duration of the journey, they're like, is it left here? Is it right here? Which way do I go now? And it's like, oh, it's frustrating because it's like, you're the taxi driver. I don't, might not know where I'm going. If I haven't been there before, I, I have no idea either. So I'll have to get my Google Maps up on my phone and <laughs> somehow end up directing them. I feel like a lot of elderly drivers might have anxiety about um, sat navs or Google Maps or they don't necessarily know how to work it. So I do empathize sometimes. I'm like, okay, fine, like, I'll, I'll help you out. Um, but just get used to the fact that you might be asked which way you wanna go, which road you wanna take. 
it happens. The next is that lizards and geckos are our friends. You can expect to find geckos making home behind your television or even taking a shower with you. This, is, <laughs> this has happened. Justin comes out the shower and was like, I just had a shower with a baby gecko. Oh, okay. They are everywhere. They, they hide behind the mirrors. They're everywhere, but they're our friends and don't be scared of them because they're not gonna hurt you. I think they are so cute. As well as monitor lizards, I love monitor lizards. I think they are the most incredible creatures to look at. Like, they're like dinosaurs. Like, they're just like so prehistoric and I just, I love them so much. So expect to see lots of lizards and geckos. Okay, the next one is that aircon. <sighs> aircon. Where do we start with aircon? Aircons will affect your allergies and sometimes get you sick. Especially if you're working in an overly air conditioned office. I suffer terribly with um, aircon allergies. I have a very sensitive nose. As soon as that air is like wafting onto my face, I just start sneezing uncontrollably. I have itchy eyes. A lot of Singaporeans actually suffer with itchy eyes. Um, and I swear it's down to the aircon. So yeah, just be aware of that. Try not to sit directly under aircon. Sometimes you will need a jacket because it is so cold. Okay, the next one is for everyone. I especially want my Singaporean viewers to pay attention to this because I get so many comments from you guys saying, oh my God, I've lived in Singapore my whole life and I didn't know this existed. I didn't know there was that. I've never been to botanic gardens. And I'm just like, what? How does this happen? I know it's so easy for us to get complacent wherever we live. You can be set in your little routine. I get it, like I used to do it back home, but I think we forget what is on our doorstep. My biggest advice is always be a tourist in your own city. Never stop being a tourist. There's still so much to see, so many experiences to have, so many places to eat. I even get people say to me, oh, I've never been to that side of Singapore because I live on the other side of Singapore. And I'm just like, guys, Singapore is such a tiny country. Like you could get to the other side in an hour and a half. There's no excuse for you not to go out there and see new things. Given it's not for everyone. If you're not interested, you're not interested. But for those of you who are, just, just make that little bit of effort. Um, there's so much to see, so many amazing things, and I hope you'll take on that advice. Never stop being a tourist. Okay, the next thing is the limited healthy options at hawker centers. Now, undeniably, hawker center food is delicious, but it's not something that I can eat every day. Asian metabolism seems to be <laughs> incredible. You guys are made for this stuff. You can eat this and won't put on any pounds. Me, on the other hand, it's not gonna happen. So just be aware that if you're looking for kind of nutritious or healthier options, you're probably not gonna find them at the hawker centers, apart from if you go to the fruit stall or you get Yong Tao Fu. A lot of the options are just meat and carbs, so you're not gonna get as much nutrition as you may need. So comment down below, let me know if there's any healthier options that you're aware of. Okay. A really quick one, if you're gonna exercise outside, don't do it in the middle of the day. When I first moved here, I was running at like 1 p.m., hottest time of the day. I don't know what I was thinking, but I would come back and I'd just be absolutely dead. It is a stupid idea. If you're gonna exercise outside, do it after 6 p.m. Like golden hour is a nice time to run, but usually wait till it's like fully dark until the sun has gone down. And then it's a tiny bit cooler in the air. Um, that is the best time to do your exercise outside. Don't make the mistakes that I made. Okay, and the last thing is that maids and helpers, just a very normal thing to have in Singapore. When I first moved here, I was like, that's so strange. Like, why does everyone, why do these families have a helper with them? And why would you get someone to clean your apartment when I can just clean it myself? It definitely is a strange concept for people that haven't been brought up that way or haven't been around it. Um, but a lot of locals, like Singaporeans, have grown up with maids in their house and helpers and they've grown up with them whole, their whole lives and they're just like part of their family. Like The whole topic has always been so interesting to me, especially if you think about the film The Help. If you've seen The Help, let me know. I always think about like the Singaporean version of The Help because, I don't know, it's just a really fascinating concept. For example, we rented this place out and it just comes with a cleaner. Like a cleaner is part of our monthly payments. So she comes and cleans our room once a week. I wouldn't usually have that back home. Um, and I don't think we necessarily need it, but it's included. And yeah, it just somehow kind of becomes the norm and I guess you get used to it. So just be aware 
that is a thing. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I feel like I've been talking for ages. I really hope that you found this video interesting, so be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it, if you've been living in Singapore as an expat or as a Singaporean, I want you to comment down below, tell me your life lessons that you've learned from living in Singapore, especially if you're comparing them to other countries, I think it's really interesting. If you want to check out more Singapore content from me, I will leave a playlist up here and there's video recommendations down below in the description box. Tons of videos that you can watch, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Subscribe if you want to see more from me and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!